See, Fresnel biprism is yet another arrangement to obtain a two coherent source. It is two by two prism having very small refracting angle placed base to base. I'll draw this first. This is the biprism. This angle is very very small. This angle is very very small. Now you have a source S over here. Right. So this will emit the radiations, this will emit light. So light will fall on the upper prism and lower prism and will get refracted as. So light from the upper prism will get reflected like this. It will go like this. So if I produce, I have just run two rays, there are similar many rays, right? If I produce it in backward direction, then these rays appear to be coming from, the rays will appear to be coming from, getting emitted from S1. So S1 is the virtual source. Similarly, if I, if I show the refraction through lower prism, it will be like, appear like this. These lights are coming from the lower slits, right? So lower prism, they are getting refracted by the lower prism. So these lights are coming, appear to be coming from S2. This can be S2. So S1 and S2 can be treated as two virtual sources. I can treat them as two virtual sources, right? Say this is a distance B slit and this, uh, sorry, prism and the screen. And between source and the prism, say this distance is A. A is the distance. Now, this is the angle of deviation. If suppose this is angle alpha, then this angle of deviation will be written as approximately equals to mu minus phi into alpha. And if I regard this distance as A, then this distance will be A delta, right? Similarly, this distance will also be A delta. So S1, S2 are two virtual sources separated by distance 2A delta, that is 2A mu minus 1 alpha. So this can be taken as 2D and distance between source S1, S2 slit, S1, S2 can be regarded very similar to a slit. S1, S2 are the two virtual sources. So they are analogous to the young double slits, right? So this is 2D, that is distance between two young double slit. They are similar to, the problem become very similar to young double slit. And the distance between slit and the screen, that is source and the screen is A plus P. Now the whole scenario is just like young double slit, right? They will produce, the, they will, the light will interfere, will produce the fringe on the screen. The interference will take place in this region, right? In the region where, which are receiving light from both the sources. So in this region you will have interference and the fringer will be observed on the screen. This is screen, right? So the fringe width will be written as lambda d upon 2d, that is lambda a plus p upon 2a, p minus an alpha. So the problem is very similar to uh, young double slit. This is another arrangement to realize young double slit are two coherent sources. S1 S2 are two coherent sources. They are emitting light of same frequency because they are the lights emitted by S1 S2 are ultimately light emitted from S. Right. I'll do one question on Fresnel biprism. I love all this. This is Fresnel biprism. This is Fresnel biprism. The question is a plane light wave with uh, wavelength lambda equals 0 0.70 micrometer falls normally the light is falling normally on this base of the biprism made of glass n equals to 1.5 to 0 n is 1.5 to 0 with a refracting angle this is your theta with a refracting angle of theta equals to 5 degree behind this is h behind the biprism, there is a plane parallel plate. This is a parallel plate of refractive index 
and dust and the space between this plate and this biprism is filled with benzene. You have to find the width of a fringe on the screen S. The screen is, this is your screen. This is the screen S. We have to find out the fringe width of a fringe, width of a fringe on the screen S behind the system, behind the system. So, <coughs> the ray coming on the biprism, we have to solve this. The ray coming on biprism, it will fall like this, right? Since it is falling straight normally, so it won't get to refracted, it will go undeviated. And here you have on this part, you will have a refraction. It will be refracted since it is denser. This is N. This is, sorry, this is same as N. This is N. This is not N dust. This is N. Recently. The benzene is N dust. This is N dust. Right. This is N dust. This is N dash, so this is denser medium, this is a rarer medium, so it will go away from the normal. It will go like this, it will go away from the normal, and again here it will get refracted, right? So it will move towards the normal, so it's a denser medium, right? And this will be. normal and this will go like this right we'll go like this now we have to find the final angle of deviation this is the angle of deviation we have to find out see if this is theta this will be 90 minus theta and this will also be theta this will be r right this will be r and uh, what will be this angle? This angle will be into a dotted line in this is incident ray. This is a dotted line, the same line of incident ray. So this will be an angle theta. So this will be an angle of R minus theta. Hence this angle will also be R minus theta. And let's suppose this angle is phi and Let's call this angle as phi. Now I can get delta. I have to apply a Snell's law. First, I'll apply it over here. This is n sine theta equals to n dash sine r. See, theta is very small. R is also very small. So this can be written as n theta is n dash r. Right? And now, so r is n theta by n dash. Now apply this Snell's law over here. That is n dash sine r minus theta equals to n sine phi. Or I'll get n dash since the angle are very small n dash r minus theta is n phi and n dash r is n theta by n dash minus theta equals to n phi and if I snell over here this n phi will be equal to 1 into delta n sine phi is 1 sine delta so that is n phi equals to delta so here I'll get delta equals to n theta minus n dash theta that is n minus n dash theta delta will be n minus n dash theta this is the total angle of deviation so your the distance between see these light getting refracted from the upper prism if they are produced in backward direction you will get s1 Watch your source S1. Now light falling on the lower part of the prism will interfere, will, 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 sorry, will diff, refract it like this 
I will appear like this. So that's also same delta. So if you produce all these rays, you'll get the second virtual source S2, right? So S1, S2 is going to be 2A delta and uh, it's 2A delta. So the fringe width, if I calculate the fringe width, fringe width is going to be lambda d 2d that is lambda a plus b 2a delta or lambda 2 delta 1 plus b by a. Now what is a? Where lies the source from the prism? See the lights are coming parallel right they are parallel rays so the source s must be at infinity means distance between source and prism should be infinite so a should be infinity so this will be this will come as this will be approximately equal to 2 n minus n theta this will be the fringe width this is going to be the fringe width. Now you put the values.